Thank you so much for your company this morning. In 1981, Jan Pryor and her husband lost their four-month-old son Alexander to cot death, now also known as SIDS. Jan has just published a book about her experience and his memory. Thank you so much for joining us, Jan. That's a pleasure. It's wonderful to have you here. I mean, the book starts with you returning to London to meet your two-month-old grandson, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, yes. Alexander died in London or in England, so this is obviously an important moment for you. Um, um, I mean, how did the trip inspire you to write the book? I mean, how did it work, or did you did you already have it in mind? Well. It was over 30 years since he died, and I was in London to re, uh, meet my then youngest grandchild. And I began to think a little bit about what had happened, because it was a long time ago. And it occurred to me that there was a, quite an important story to tell, really. Not for me especially, but to um, get it out there. Because I think so many people lose babies or don't have babies, have a sense of loss, lose a child. And this story is never told. I think you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Yeah. So part, I guess, of this book was therapy for yourself and your family, but also to help others. Is that primarily is that what it came down to? Mike, it really wasn't therapy for me. Okay. I, I think I, I mean the reason I wrote it was that I felt sufficiently strong um, that I didn't need it as as therapy. It was something I wanted to tell. It's partly. Um, to keep him in memory, memory because nobody in New Zealand knew him. But it, it, it's equally, as I said, to get it out there so that people who've had similar losses know that they can acknowledge their own experiences. Do you think there's yeah. a, 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 around this issue, people don't like to talk about it too much, or if oh, you've lost a baby? Very much, very much. I mean, I talk in the book about how people dodge you. You know, people would avoid avoid me, particularly other, other parents, because they didn't want to talk about it, to even acknowledge it. So they wouldn't yeah. know how to deal, deal with that grief themselves exactly. and how to be supportive exactly. of somebody who's going yeah. through that. Uh, there were times when I found I was supporting other people um, wow. to help them to <laughs> deal with me, if you, if you like. So yeah. Mel's right. I guess it is a very hard thing to talk about. I mean, and, and it's a sad journey, but it's also, as you said, a celebration of Alexander as well. What about people watching right now? How do you help a friend or a family member who has lost a child like this? What's the, what's the advice you would give? Absolutely the most important thing, I think, is to acknowledge that child's existence. Don't avoid it, don't change the subject, don't tell them about your aunt who lost a baby, don't tell them that your dog died last week, somebody said that to me. Um, <laughs> don't, don't say it was meant to be, um, uh, don't say you'll get over it. Just ask them about the child. What was, what was she like? Tell me about her personality. And, and what, by doing that, you're acknowledging the existence of the child, mm -hmm. you're, you're acknowledging the fact that they've lost a child, and you're giving them a chance to talk mm -hmm. because you want to talk about it again and again and again, and you don't because people are embarrassed. So, so what do you think about people who say to you, and I'm sure they do, well, time heals everything. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> time softens things, no question about that. You don't heal, but what you do is assimilate that into yourself and it becomes part of who you are in, in, in a good way. Um, you don't get over it. Uh, and you know, I wouldn't want to get over it. Mm. What does that mean? It means uh, what I think happens is that time gives you a way of coming to terms with and realising, uh, in my case certainly, that I was lucky to have that child. You know, I had him for four months and mm. that was good. That was a good thing. You've had a really interesting career too, haven't you? I mean, academic, psychologist, uh, expert in family relationships, chief commissioner for the Families Commission. Do you think all of that, uh, that uh, all of those career options have helped you write this book? Gosh, that's very hard to tell. Mm. I think about that sometimes. I think um, a little bit. I mean, I understand a lot about family relationships and other kinds of relationships. I, I used to teach developmental psychology, so I think I know quite a lot about how babies and children develop. But they kind of ran parallel paths in a way, I think. Yeah. It probably made me a more compassionate person. And on that compassion, you know, you've got other children. Uh -huh. As a grieving parent, how do you support your children through that? Because it obviously affects them as well when you lose somebody. Well, yes. I mean, they were uh, seven and five. And we focused very much on those children. Uh, in retrospect, what I don't know that we did as well as we should have was to reassure them that it was not their fault. Okay. Because little children, they're quite egocentric and they will think it was. And it was a very long time before I understood that my daughter, who was five at the time, thought it was her fault because she'd asked for a sandwich and she thought that that, get, that delay had caused Alexander to die, which of course it didn't. So my, mm. 
if I want to give any advice, please, please keep telling your children it's not their fault. Mm. Thank you so much, Jan. Thank you. Now, Jan's book, After Alexander, is available now at all good bookstores, and there is further information available on her website as well.